Hey and welcome back to another video and in this video we're going to look at how we can improve our create form even more by adding in some basic validation. So right now in our create form you're actually able to just submit data when it's empty. Just to show you this as an example, if I actually just run our project on the simulator to show, so if I now just try to create an account and I don't even enter anything in any of the text fields and I just hit submit, you'll see in a second that I actually is successful now we actually don't want to allow this because we actually want to stop the user from being able to actually enter in some data when they're actually trying to you know submit an empty form so when you're actually working with a take-home test you always want to think about the little things and these are the things that will help you stand out massively so what we want to do is ensure that when you've entered in a value before you can submit the form now we'll make sure that the form isn't empty and give you some visual feedback to tell you if something goes wrong so what we're going to do is actually add in and create a validator struct that we can actually use to validate if our person is valid. So what we're going to do now is actually create a validator struct that we can use for our validation. So if our person is valid or not. So what we're going to do is actually create a new file in our create feature folder. And we're just going to create a file called create validator. So the reason why I've not called this like you know create form view model for example was because it's technically not a view model this is something that we're going to use for validation hence why i've ended it with validator so let's go into here and then within our create folder we're going to create a new group called validator and then within here we're going to create a new file called like i said create validator Okay, sweet. So like I said before, I didn't call this a view model because it's not technically a view model. It's something we're just going to use for validation, hence why you know it ends in validator. So the purpose of this is to simply just validate an object. So let's actually just type out the skeleton in terms of what it is that we want. What we have is a function called validate where it takes in a person and this is the new person that we use on our create view. And then now it's simply just throws. So if something goes wrong, we're going to throw an error. So the next thing we'll need to do is actually define the possible errors that can be thrown if something goes wrong. So let's define this now. If we just look at our errors, our possible errors that can happen, we've got an invalid first name, last name, and job. So these are all the fields, if you look at our simulator, where something could go wrong. And then also as well, we have an error description where we outline the message that we want to show on the screen if we actually throw any of these errors. So you can actually access the error description. And this is done by using the localized error and basically setting the value for the error description that comes with the localized error protocol. So now that we actually have our errors defined, we can actually start to write the logic to validate the field in our new person. So what we wanna do for now is just keep it simple. And we just wanna basically have some basic validation to check to see if any of our fields are empty. And if they are empty, then we'll throw some kind of error. So let's do this now. So inside our function here, we're just going to say if person dot first name is empty then we simply just want to throw the invalid first name error cool so now we've done this for the first name but we also want to do the same for the last name and the job so we simply just need to repeat this check twice And then now that we repeat these checks, we also need to want to change the error that we throw since for last name, we don't want to show first name. So we'll say invalid last name. And then for job, we'll say invalid job like so. Cool. So now if everything is okay, nothing will be thrown. But if any of these cases basically kind of match, then we'll throw the appropriate error. So if you want to learn more about how to use more advanced concepts like regular expressions, then check out my other video in the SwiftUI form validation that covers this. So now we have our validator, we need to actually use this in our view model and check to see if there's an error before attempting to create a user. So let's actually add this logic in now. So we'll first off start by creating an instance of our validator within our view model. So we want to go inside of our create view model like so, 
And then at the top here, below our published properties, we actually want to create an instance of our validator. I'm just going to close that to get more space. So we're going to say private let validator is equal to create validator. Cool. So now we have our validator within this object. So like I said before, we actually want to try to validate the person before attempting to send the request to create a new user. So what we're going to need to use here is actually a do catch case. So all the logic that we actually have now within here, we actually want to wrap all of this within a do catch clause. So let's just actually just type this out first. So what we're going to say here is we're going to say do, and then we're simply just going to have catch. So within our do catch, we want to try to validate the person. And if it fails, then it's going to fall within this catch case. So we can catch any errors and handle that, which we will do in the you know later parts of this video. So the first we want to do in our do case is we want to try to validate the person. So here we want to say try. And then we're going to say validator.validate. And then the property that we want to validate is this person here. Cool. So if this fails and messes up, then in our catch statement for now, we're just going to simply just print the error. We'll handle this later. But if this doesn't fail, what's going to happen is it's going to carry on execution onto the next set of lines. So after the validate, we actually want to copy all the code that we have here for sending a request and paste it after that. So let's just cut this. And we're just going to paste it here. Cool. So if you look at the flow of how this is going to work, we're first of all going to try to attempt to validate the person. If everything is okay, then we're going to continue execution and send the request. If nothing is okay, so there's actually something wrong, then we're just simply for now going to print the error. Now let's move on to how we can actually handle the, you know, displaying the error to the user. Because if something goes wrong, you want to tell the user like, you know, what's gone wrong so they can try to fix it. But if you actually look at our code, we actually have a bit of a problem here. So the problem that we have is that if we want to display an error to the user on the screen, we've actually said that the type specifically needs to be a networking error. But our form validate function can actually throw a different kind of error. So it can actually throw a create validator error. So they're actually not the same type technically. So we can't actually use the error that gets thrown from this function within our actual you know, property here error. So I don't want to actually create another set of properties for each type of errors because this will get really long. So what we need to do is almost like combine and make this property more flexible to allow different types of error. So in order to do that, and allow different types of error, what we're going to do is actually create a new type of error called a form error. So what this will allow us to do is accept either a validation error or a networking error when something goes wrong. So just to show you this in action, what we're going to do here is underneath our create view model, we're going to create an extension on the view model. And we're going to say create view model. And then now we're going to define our error. So we're going to say enum form error. And it's going to be our type localized error like so. And now the two cases that we want here is a networking error and a validation error. So we're going to say case networking. And then we're going to say error, localized error. And then we're going to do the same thing for validation. So now we just need to handle the text that's actually shown on the screen in the case that we want. So because we've now, you know, extracted this out into a networking and a validation error, we need to actually grab the error messages from our errors whenever we throw them. So what we're just simply going to do is again, use the error description property that comes with localized error and just extract the error description. So like I said before, we're just simply doing a switch statement on the type of form error. And then we just simply extract the error description from the associated value from the case. And then this is what's going to be used to show the error on the screen. So now what we're able to do is actually update our property to not be directly tied to only be of type networking error. And instead, this can now be a form error like so.
cool now what should happen is we should get an error below because we're now you know trying to cast a type that's not the same because if you look at the error it's saying it can't assign a networking error to type create view model form error so in order to get around this what we just simply need to do is simply just use our enum case and assign it to this value so let's do that now so you may be wondering why I've decided to actually force unwrap this type of error here and the reason why is because I know for a fact that when I'm using this that there's actually no possibility that this could not be of type networking error so it's actually safe for me to force unwrap it now if you actually want to make this a bit safer what you could do instead is simply just do something like this Now doing something like this would be a lot safer and it would actually ensure that if you was to force unwrap it your application won't crash but in the situation before I know that the type could never be anything other than this networking error but for now I'll just leave it like this just to show you a safer way of making sure that your applications don't crash. So now we've handled the networking error the next thing we need to do is we need to just handle our form validation error. So in our do catch, so in our catch statement here, we now need to actually try to cast the type as a validation error. So let's do that now. So now what we're saying here is that we're setting the has error to true and we're also as well setting the error type to be of type, you know, create validator error and then setting our error to be this case here. So now let's test this out. So if I tap on the plus button and if I hit submit, you'll see that I now get the error on the screen telling me that my first name can't be empty. And now you'll realize as well that when we tap on this OK, it just simply just dismisses our alert. And the reason why is because we go to our create view, we actually don't have any buttons within our alert modifier. So when you actually tap on it, nothing's going to happen. So we don't get stuck in like a continuous loop with the create screen. So this is all looking pretty good. But one thing I do want to do before we wrap up is I actually want to add in some kind of visual feedback onto the screen to let the user know after they dismiss the you know alert, what's gone wrong. So we're actually going to add in a section within our footer. If you want to learn more about this, then check out my video about form sections in the Swift UI sessions playlist. So what we're simply going to do is just wrap our you know information here. So our first name, last name and job within some kind of section. And then what we're simply going to do here is we're just going to literally get our, put some text in. And we're just going to have a placeholder for now that just says like error here. So you can just see what it looks like. And then we're just going to set the foreground style. To red. So now what I'm going to do is actually just use the Swift UI previews. Let's bring up the canvas. So if we just run this in the canvas, we should see our error here. So it's looking pretty good. Okay, cool. Sweet. So what we want to do here is rather than having our placeholder text, we actually want to extract the error from our view model and display it on the screen here. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to actually just do some, you know, optional unwrapping using the enum case. So I'm going to type this out and then we'll break it down. So what we have here is we're basically checking to see if our error matches the validation case and if it does then we're simply going to extract the error out and then we're going to unwrap the error description and then place that within our text. So let's just actually just try this out and see what happens. So if we just run this on the preview, if I just hit submit, you should now see that we see our error message below our section. So when we tap off here, we get a message to tell us what's going wrong.
so it's looking pretty good so that's looking good with our errors but just before we actually wrap up there is one thing that i have realized and if we actually look in our console when we actually submit our form if i just was like doing it before you'll see that we actually have quite a few warnings here about a cycle being detected so what does this mean well the reason why we're seeing this is because swift ui is actually warning us that we're still trying to edit a text field and disable it at the same time now when you tap into a text field it actually becomes the first responder essentially meaning that it becomes the active text field so when a user taps on submit we essentially need to not make any text fields active to get rid of this warning now you can actually do this by using the focus state property wrapper and you can learn more about this in my course in the swift ui sessions playlist all about focus state and managing keyboards so in order to remove this and actually fix this issue that we actually have here in our create view we're going to need to create a focus state property for our text fields so let's do that now so in order to do that the first thing we're going to do is actually create an enum which actually has a case for each text field within our create form so these are the enum cases that we're going to have for our create form and as you can see they actually match each one of the cases that you see on the screen. Now we need to define our focus state property wrapper. So just below our environment variable, above our state object, we'll define this. So let's do that now. Cool. So as you can see, we're saying focus state and we're marking it as private var because we don't want this to be exposed from outside of this view. We need to tell each text field what we want the focus state to be and bind to this property. So if we just go down here, so on our first name, we're going to say dot focused and this is going to bind to our focused field. And then we're going to have equals to first name. So when someone actually taps on the first name text field, it's actually going to assign this value to our focus field. So the system will know that the focus field is this text field. So now we're actually able to, you know, programmatically remove and resign the text field. So it's not active anymore. So we need to repeat this for each one of our text fields on the screen. So let's do that now. So the final thing we need to do is when we actually finish, so like I said before, the final thing that we need to do is that when we try to submit our form, we need to resign the field. So just above our create function, all we need to do here is to say focus field is equal to nil. And then this is what is going to help us resolve removing these attribute errors. So let's run this again and see what happens on our simulator. I'm just going to close the canvas to get a bit of space. If we just hit the plus button, and then if we try and submit, you'll see that we get an error, which is all good. And if I actually try to enter in some values and then hit submit, you'll now see that we don't get those warnings about the attribute graph anymore, and we actually don't have the errors from you know xcode complaining cool so that's everything in this video if you enjoyed this video i'd really appreciate it if you left some feedback in the comment section below also as well if you haven't already i'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel and hit notification bells for updates for whenever i release a new video that's everything from me i'll catch you in a bit deuces